Just kidding. I don't have a child yet. Hello, friends. After quitting my full-time job on top of working on my YouTube channel, I've started my journey as a house husband. In this video, I will share with you how this experience has changed me. Let's begin. Initially, this started because my wife wanted to eat healthier food. But healthier options in Singapore will cost you an arm and a leg. Except if you cook them yourself. Now that I don't have an income, cooking at home is also the cheapest way for me to avoid starvation. So I thought, hmm, maybe I'll give home-cooked, healthier, cheaper option a try. But there's a problem. I don't really know how to cook. I'll have to learn on the job. By the way, just kidding, I really learned how to cook. <laughs> I started learning how to cook eggs, stir-frying vegetables, and all kinds of chicken. My MasterChef journey was looking optimistic until I realized that I was spending half of my day every day in the kitchen. I took so long to do simple tasks like cutting onions and chopping vegetables. I even cut myself like ah. twice a week when I tried to go too fast. And my menu is still very limited. I've been practicing how to cook chicken every day until last week, my wife was asking me, uh, dear, can we eat something that's not chicken today? <laughs> but in my defense, right, it was steamed chicken, then a fried chicken, and then <laughs> roast chicken. It's different, right? <laughs> The one time that I wanted to impress my wife with variety, I ended up making the worst mistake in my life as a house husband. Every time we go out to a Chinese restaurant and eat this fresh soy sauce steamed fish, I always see her smiling from ear to ear. So I knew if I can make this dish, she will be impressed and she will be so happy. So I thought to myself, hmm, soy sauce steamed fish. Recalling it is so embarrassing. I did exactly what I said. I was so excited for her to try the fish. When she got home, I plated the fish very nicely, served it to her. We sat down together, and when she got a bite of the fish, her face contorted, and she was asking me, what did you cook the fish in? So I told her, yeah, soy sauce, steamed fish. Soy sauce, steamed fish. That was the day that I learned you're supposed to mix the soy sauce with water and maybe it's best to follow a recipe before going freestyle. On the bright side, all the other mistakes that I do after this was eclipsed by this one incident. So yesterday I was asking her, there, are you happy with my cooking? And she said, no. Oh. But I know you will improve. You are developing <laughs> so guys here's to trying harder and be a better cook well from this one month i really have a newfound respect for people who hold a full-time job and still cook daily for their family i cannot imagine the amount of skills and logistics and planning and all the effort that goes into it respect
my house husband journey also badly ruined my eating out experience. So last week, my wife and I, we went out on a date in a restaurant. I was looking at the restaurant menu and one line says, oven baked chicken, $30. My house husband brain suddenly screamed in my head, yo, this is a freaking scam. The chicken from the supermarket is $10 and if you add all the spices and seasonings, this probably makes $2. So at $12 versus the $30, wow, I could have made it in one third of the price. This is definitely a scam. And even at the hawker center, when you want to add fried egg, they charge you $1. I'm like, that's like 30 cents. And you go to those Chinese restaurants, one plate of broccoli, they charge you $12. Then I'm like thinking, wow, I can make like 10 portions of this. I know I don't have to chop, I don't have to wash. I just sit down and enjoy the food. It just makes it a little bit difficult to enjoy myself. So now I keep trying to only order things that I don't think I can make at home. And speaking of money, it's super expensive to be a house husband in Singapore. I'm still paying for my mortgage. I want to start a family. I hope I can provide a comfortable life for my family and maybe still go on vacations. But house husbands don't earn any money. So in the long term, it doesn't make any financial sense to be a house husband, unless your wife carries the bank. Uh, dear. So I do feel slightly useless at the moment because I'm not even doing a good job. Yeah, on the days that I don't feel like I worked on my channel enough, I do feel quite terrible about myself. There is still the dreadful feeling that my journey is going to fail. What helped me so far is accepting that this path that I've taken is one that is closer to my heart. And this journey is for the long haul, so I may not be seeing any results anytime soon. So I need to continue to fight hard to realize my dreams. For now, is to monetize this channel and perhaps grow my brand. So if you'd like to fight on with me, hit the subscribe button and let's do it. Now that I have more time to think about life, I also come to realize that the standard Singaporean lifestyle can get very unsustainable and very out of balance. I'm referring to the lifestyle where most Singaporeans will pursue the most profitable 9 to 5 career. They'll compete to be the best employee to get the best increments and the best promotions. Recalling my own experience 5 years plus in that life, after a full day of work, it's really very difficult to find the energy and time to do anything else. In the weekends, I really want to rest, but I also want to go out with my family, hang out with my friends, or likely I will need to go do some of the chores that I couldn't have done on the weekdays. It's almost like back in university, you have to choose two out of three. This time, it's relationships, health, or career. I start to wonder, what are we willing to give up for a better work-life balance? But why are we all into this lifestyle? Well, personally, and also from my observation, I think everyone wants to have a nice house, go on long holidays at least once a year, eat nice food once in a while, and while in pursuit of these things, we might end up sticking with jobs that we don't really like, accepting the fact that we're just too busy with work to do anything else, and even stop listening to our own dreams because it's not possible. If I were to go back to corporate again, I don't know how I can achieve work-life balance. Maybe it's possible to work smarter rather than work harder, but knowing myself, I'm quite greedy and I tend to overestimate myself as well. Even back then, I thought I can just work over time, cut down on sleep and exercise, still go out on dates, meet my friends. Because if I slow down, it will also slow my career growth. And if my career growth is affected, I may not be able to support my family with the level that I want. It's quite a catch-22. Maybe the comfortable level should also be negotiable and feasible. So a more modest house, vacation but to nearer, cheaper locations, and maybe cook the nice food at home. <laughs> of course, maybe I'm just too privileged to be saying this because I can afford to be a house husband for a month. And I'm also aware that there are people who don't have a choice to work or not to work because it means putting food on the table for their loved ones. What I know for sure is I want to prioritize family because although I haven't had children of my own yet, I've heard regretful stories of parents who said that they couldn't spend enough time with their children. So I'm hoping that I can learn from their wisdom. So what about you guys? What are the things you are willing to give up for work-life balance? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you in the next video. I hope the blueberry 
Indomie doesn't traumatize you guys.